Good Monday Makers. In this week's episode, we're going to be checking out a closet organizer, a kayak cart, a garden enclosure, a workshop cart, and some shade structures for a garden. A lot of great things in these builds. Let's jump right in and check them out. First up is this build from Paul, and this is the closet organizer. You can see here, it looks like they've got you know, this closet in a bedroom or an office, and they wanted to utilize the space inside. You can see before the frame here, it was just completely empty and, you know, probably hard to utilize the space, maybe put some vacuums or brooms and things in there. But, you know, if you're actually sleeping in there and you want to put clothes in there, you're kind of stuck and you have to install, you know, some, uh, you know, um, clothes rods and things in there. But instead what they did was they built a framework out of EMT conduit and maker pipe connectors, as you can see. And it's basically just, uh, you know, made specifically for the dimensions inside. And I'm sure that they probably just, you know, put the, the pipes and connectors in the closet and kind of built it in the closet, which, you know, makes it where you don't have to worry about, you know, building it outside the closet and then having, you know, too big of a frame to actually get in the door and maneuver in there. But by building it inside the closet, it allows you to utilize all the space. And you can see they did some cool stuff. They basically have a, a rung around the bottom. I'm sure that's just for support. And then it looks like the same design up top, but there's some extra pipes on the top going from side to side. And this is supporting some shoe boxes and different things. And then they added some pipes from side to side. Looks like using T connectors and they just created some partitions in different places to store some tops and then some bottoms here as you can see and uh, just a really great build and a really great way to utilize some empty space in this closet uh, that otherwise you know you're kind of limited to what you could put in there but now they can utilize it for storage of different clothes and shoes and things so really awesome build paul thanks so much for sharing that really great to see next up is a build from mark and this is cool this is a kayak cart, and it's very similar to a lot of the kayak carts that we've seen mentioned in the community in the past, except it's got some slight modifications that Mark mentioned in the post here. But basically, it's the, the triangle design. That aspect is the same from the different kayak carts that we've seen, and the one that we actually have a kit for on the website. And it's basically just a triangle frame using 45-degree connectors. The axle runs through the bottom pipe here in the middle, and it's got some of the pneumatic wheels on there, which work great for, you know, some trails and gravel and things like that. And apparently the modifications that Mark made was to make this a little bit bigger for his specific kayak. And he also made it so the, the rails here that run front to back, normally on these we just see, uh, we don't see these two middle pipes. We just see the outer two. And then it's usually, you know, ratchet strapped down or something like that. Uh, but he added these two pipes in the middle that sit in this channel at the bottom of the kayak, which just helps secure it in place even more. And I think he said it holds it so well that he doesn't even have to strap it down or anything. And he doesn't have to worry about it pivoting. Uh, or maybe he does ratchet it strap or ratchet strap it down. Uh, but he said he doesn't have to worry about it pivoting or, you know, kind of rotating on top of the frame because it's, you know, kind of secured and there's four different touch points. Uh, but that's really cool. And that's kind of the whole idea of you know, conduit and connectors, you can take a design from the community that you've seen and rebuild it exactly, or you can customize it, change the dimensions, or add different things to it that better suit your needs. So that's really cool, Mark. Thanks so much for sharing that. Really cool build. Next up is a build that was left as a review from Haiti, I believe. And this is really cool. This is uh, an outdoor garden enclosure, as you can see here. And this is uh, quite the structure. It's pretty large, and they designed it and built it in a really great way. They have verticals every few feet, which is a really good building practice to keep in mind whenever you're doing outdoor structures or really any structure for that matter. And then they've got, you know, 90 degree connectors to create the cube shape. And then they use some looks like T connectors and 180 degree connectors as well. And then they've got the roof peak, I believe, using T connectors also. Uh, which is really cool. And, uh, oh, if you didn't see, we've got the 135 degree connectors back in stock. Took us a bit to, to get those back up. We've got them up on the website. There'll be a link down below if you want to check them out and if you've been waiting for them. Uh, but it looks like they use T connectors for the roof peak there. And uh, that's a great thing to do. If, if we're out of 135s or if you just need to make a, a weird angle for the roof pitch, you can actually do two T connectors and basically just put them side by side and then adjust the angle 
uh, based on what you need for that roof peak. Uh, so you can keep that in mind for, for different structures and things. But this is a really cool build, and they added some chicken wire to the outside of the frame. I would imagine it's secured with zip ties or something like that. Really easy. There's quite a few different ways that you can secure chicken wire and materials, and, uh, and, and you can make enclosures and things. This is really great. So thanks so much for sharing this as a review. Haiti, we really appreciate it, and it's a great build. Next up is an awesome work cart from Drew, and this is really cool. He said it's just a general all-purpose work cart for his shop, and it's nice and simple. It's just four 90-degree connectors on the bottom to create this bottom uh, square shape, and then the same thing at the top. And then it looks like he added some wood to the top of the frame and then kind of accessorized it after that. So you can see there's some casters on the bottom so it can roll around and you get the cart aspect out of it. And then he's got this tool uh, or this compressor down here at the bottom that's secured to the frame. Uh, maybe it's just resting on there. Probably don't really have to secure it. But then he's also got like a surge protector that's clamped onto the vertical pipe. And then he added a really cool drawer to the frame, which is awesome. And I believe he just got some of the drawer slides you can get at Lowe's or Home Depot. They have a huge selection, all kinds of different ones. And I think he just secured those directly to the frame by just adding uh, screws through the drawer slides and into the conduit. We did a video a while back on using hanger straps to secure them. Uh, but there's you know all sorts of different ways that you can do it and kind of achieve the, the drawer slides to make this. But this is super cool. And I love the, the tag on there. It says sacred space. And uh, as you can see, it slides in and out. And he's just got some, some tools and different things in there, paper towels. And uh, it's able to slide in and out. There you can see the drawer slide and kind of how it functions. But that's a super cool, really awesome cart, nice and simple. But it's just a great thing to have to roll around. And you can keep some tools on top or blueprints or whatever you're working on. Keep it all close by and roll it around with you when you're working in the garage. Super awesome. Thanks so much for sharing that, uh, Drew. Really appreciate it. Next up is actually two structures from Nancy, and she built these garden uh, shades for different garden beds that she has, and she actually did two. One of them is freestanding, which we'll look at in a minute, and then the first one here, she actually has attached to different points. So the first part of it is attached to the side of her house, and I love these notes that she put on here. This is attached to the wood beam, and the cross piece is to string, string the shade uh, and secure that in place, which is really cool. But you can see the adjustable angle flange secures to this wood beam, as she mentioned. And then the, you know, the, the pipes go out from the, the beam out and over the garden. And then she just added a vertical support using, I think, T connectors. And then she used the adjustable 180 to add some bracing, which is a, a good technique to use. And I think she secured the verticals to the raised garden beds using uh, one or two hole straps. Uh, which is you know a great way to do that if you've got a, a garden bed that's wood or something that you can attach to. And then she used crossover clamps to add another cross beam. And then as she said, the, the uh, string here is pulling the sunshade tight to this side of the frame. And it looks like she's got a mixture of ball bungees around the outside of the frame, which are a really great technique if you've got grommets in your sunshade. Uh, that's how she did that uh, specific shade. And then she also did another one, and this one is freestanding, and she used a really good technique for this as well. She's got the three quarter inch verticals inside of these cement blocks, or I forget what these are called, but I think she puts a note here. But she's got these verticals, and then she's got these half inch curved pieces that she bent, and those are just slipped down inside of the three quarter inch, which is a really interesting technique and a good idea. And something else that's really a good idea that you can incorporate into your builds is she said she used crossover clamps to kind of prototype the build and to kind of put it together without actually putting it together because she didn't want to cut her conduit in dimensions and then have to change those dimensions later and go buy more conduit. So she just kind of put it together roughly with the, the crossover clamps to see how the design was going to you know, kind of play out. But then she said she end, ended up liking the design with the crossover clamps and just left them attached. But that is a really good idea if you want to, you know, kind of prototype a build and put it together without actually fully putting it together and cutting conduit and committing to those dimensions. That's really interesting. But this is a really awesome build. You can see she's got a shelf on this side with a bunch of smaller potted plants. And she's got some large potted plants on this side. And very similar to the other sunshade, it's just pulled tight to the frame using ball bungees and a really good idea. And I think she said uh, she's got wire rope on each corner connected to the ground acres. Oh, oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, we talked about that in a build or in a video a few weeks back. She's got some cable uh, routed around the, the pipes and those just pull to the ground to the ground anchors and that just keeps the whole thing stable during the wind. Good idea to incorporate that. Oh, here's the opposite end. You can see where the wire or the cable goes down into the ground anchor. And then she's got the planter block 
and a four foot piece of rebar in the center hole going down into the ground and the conduit slips over that. So she's got a lot of great techniques to anchor this to the ground and keep it stable. And here's another one. Cactus shelf is freestanding and secured to the shade structure frame with hose clamps and shims, which is really cool. Cactus and shelf stay in house in winter. Awesome. Really great details, really awesome stuff here. Thanks so much, Nancy, for sharing these builds. Super cool, and uh, we can all learn a lot from the different things that you incorporated into them. Thanks, everybody, for posting your projects. As always, we love seeing them and showcasing them in these videos. If you like this video, leave a like and consider subscribing. And if you want to see any of these builds in more detail, they'll be linked down below. Thanks, everybody, for watching. We'll see you in the next one.